Good evening. The identity of Lawyer X, who snitched on high-profile gangland clients, can finally be revealed as former defence barrister Nicola Gobbo. Court reporter Eliza Rugg joins me with the details. Eliza, it's been a long time coming to expose the truth. Pete, it has taken us five years to be able to name Nicola Gobbo as the police informant with the perfect disguise as defence barrister. She led a double life, representing gangland clients like Carl Williams and Tony Mockbell, all the while informing on them to police. This is the biggest legal corruption the state has ever seen, so big it sparked a royal commission. It wasn't until 4.15 this afternoon that police lost their fight to keep her identity a secret. That means the suppression order has been lifted and we can now reveal the damage done by Nicola Gobbo. Informer 3838, EF, Lawyer X, or to her clients, Nicola Gobbo. The criminal barrister today revealed as the police informant who dobbed on her clients to help police put them behind bars. Victoria Police initially admitted that Gobbo was a registered police informant between 2005 and 2009, but later revealed the lawyer started her double life 10 years earlier, in 1995. She represented some of Melbourne's most notorious underworld figures, including Carl Williams, drug trafficker Rob Caram and Tony Mockbell. Her role as a human source may have led to at least 386 arrests and convictions. Now, this should not have occurred. We want to know how it did and exactly what the impacts might be. For the journalist who broke the story, it's been a five-year battle to reveal the biggest legal scandal in Victoria's history. There are people out there who may not know that they've, their cases have been tainted or, in fact, that they've, their court cases were somewhat of a fraud. Police rumoured to have spent millions in legal fees, trying and failing to keep her identity a secret. We've reached a point where, where we've done all we can legally. Expensive? Yeah, expensive. The High Court ruling the integrity of the criminal justice system comes before keeping the mother of two anonymous. Well, obviously we're still concerned about the safety uh, of the person. Nicola Gobbo's actions have sparked a royal commission into the management of police informants. Were fundamental and appalling breaches of EF's obligations as counsel to her clients. And the blonde barrister was not the only one betraying her client's trust. As well as Nicola Gobbo, seven other legal professionals were listed as police sources. A court clerk and a legal secretary were registered informants. So was mafia lawyer Joe Aquaro. He was executed by a gunman outside his Ligon Street cafe in 2016. Others were on police files or considered community contacts, including a company legal secretary, a solicitor, a former lawyer and a self-proclaimed legal advisor. It's still unclear if Nicola Gobbo will give evidence at the Royal Commission, with public hearings set to begin at the end of the month. She is cooperating with proceedings, but only via her own lawyer. Now that her identity is public knowledge, the Commission is hoping that more of her former clients, who fear their cases may have been tainted, will come forward with information. They have until April 15 to make submissions. After that, some could be retried, others allowed to walk free and given compensation. Has she got enough footage? Eliza Rugg, Nine News. The unmasking of Lawyer X will have many wondering just who is Nicola Gobbo. At the centre of the state's biggest legal scandal, the colourful barrister is no stranger to the headlines. Brett McLeod explains. Until now, unlike many of her clients, Nicola Gobbo wasn't quite a household name. But within the legal fraternity, she was one of Melbourne's best-known criminal barristers. Her name has a silk pedigree. Her cousin is barrister Jeremy Gobbo QC, her uncle, former Victorian governor and judge, James Gobbo. Her first encounter with the law came as a university student. Drug charges after a raid on her Carlton house, which would lead to a good behaviour bond, but no conviction was recorded. As a lawyer, she was associated with figures such as Carl Williams, drug kingpin Pasquale Barbaro, murdered lawyer and police informant Joseph Pino Aquaro and Tony Mockville, at least up until he fled the country. We don't know. All, all we know is he didn't turn up. We don't, I, I know absolutely no more than that. She also represented John Patrick Ford, the criminal who claimed his evidence would free Chappelle Corby. 
Nicola Gobbo has hit the headlines before today, most sensationally in 2010, when she admitted she wore a police wire to record conversations with former detective Paul Dale, suspected but never convicted of the murder of informer Terence Hodson. Claiming threats to her life, she sued the state of Victoria and former police chiefs Christine Nixon and Simon Overland for not protecting her, even though the High Court noted last November she refused to enter witness protection. My health has deteriorated as a result of constant stress and uncertainty. I remain in fear for my life since agreeing to give evidence for Victoria Police. She received a payout of more than $3 million. Just six months ago, Nicola Gobbo received a Premier's Award for volunteering at a Brighton childcare centre. She was the victim of a suspected targeted attack when her BMW was set on fire in South Melbourne. She's battled ill health, suffering a stroke in 2004, as well as fighting cancer and major depression. More happily, she became a mother in 2013. And now Nicola Gobbo is a household name, although probably better known by her alter ego, Lawyer X. Brett McLeod, Nine News. Good evening. It's one of Victoria's biggest scandals, but for five years, the identity of Lawyer X has been wrapped in secrecy and legal battles that have cost taxpayers millions of dollars. Tonight, we can finally name and show her. This is the face of the lawyer turned police informant at the centre of the scandal. Her name is Nicola Gobbo. She came from a high profile Melbourne family and was a lawyer to the city's underbelly only to double-cross them. This is Nicola Gobbo, star lawyer to the who's who of Melbourne's underworld. She represented them all, giving legal advice and opened doors to crime lord Tony Mockbell. Here she is in the inner circle of the Williams clan, with Carl and Roberta celebrating their daughter Dakota's lavish, no expenses spared christening at Crown Casino. I've been asked to make a special thank you and a special thank you that Carl could be with us all tonight. And in all these moments, she was betraying her clients and telling their secrets to the police. The conduct is completely egregious and that lawyers have been every bit as horrified as the rest of the community to learn about the conduct that Lawyer X engaged in. Nicola Gobbo is 46 years old. She's a mother from a blue blood Melbourne legal family. Her cousin is Jeremy Gobbo QC and she is the niece of former governor Sir James Gobbo. The family have distanced themselves from the scandal saying they have not seen or spoken to Nicola in many years and have no knowledge of her actions. Her contact book reveals the twisted web of a double agent. Gobbo met Tony Mockbell in 2000 and one when she became his lawyer. Through Mockbell, she met drug lord Carl Williams and became a confidant to him and wife Roberta. She represented mob boss Pasquale Barbaro and Rob Caram, accused of importing millions of dollars of ecstasy from Italy in tomato tins. Gobbo and murdered mafia lawyer Joe Aquaro, who was also ratting on his clients, worked side by side. She helped him represent jailed Calabrian mafia boss Frank McDaffrey. The whole time Gobbo was dobbing on them, feeding information to Simon Overland, the head of the Piranha Underworld Task Force. Victoria Police have spent millions of dollars trying to keep her identity suppressed. The Chief Commissioner fearing for her life. We've taken it through that legal process, a long legal process, and uh, we've, we've sort of lost every step of the way. But the Director of Public Prosecutions had already informed all her clients that she was a snitch. Since 2014, Herald Sun journalist Anthony Dowsley has been fighting to reveal the truth. Well, the wider implications is that this is going to be very costly. Um, there will be people that possibly should not be on the street back on the street. Um, that's almost a certainty in some cases. The battle was taken all the way to the High Court and last week she lost. Today at 4.15 the order lifted and Lawyer X's name was made public and infamous. 
The reach of Gobbo's double dealing is gobsmacking. She was registered as a police informer since 1995. Her inside information led to 386 arrests and convictions, which she wears as a badge of honour. She claims she's given police more than 5,000 information reports. All of that and every dealing she's had with Victoria Police is now the subject of a royal commission. Mike. Police were ducking for cover today as their multi-million dollar informer's identity was revealed. Let's dig a little deeper. Dean Felton is at police headquarters. Dean, how high is the fallout from this going to go? Well, Mike, the police, of course, did their very best for the best part of five years to keep the lawyer, effect, uh, lawyer ex affair secret in order that they could protect their informant. But with that battle now lost, questions will be asked about how they came to engage a top criminal lawyer who was at the time acting for the biggest names in Melbourne's underworld. Christine Nixon was the chief commissioner at the time, but it was the man who succeeded her, Simon Overland, who was tasked with dealing directly with Nicola Gobbo as a registered informant. Now, the current Chief Commissioner, Graham Ashton, has defended the scheme. He says it was necessary in the context of the time, that is, the middle of Melbourne's underworld wars. But it's all left a massive political headache for Premier Daniel Andrews. But we've been pretty frank about this. You know, this should not have occurred. We want to know how it did and exactly what the impacts might be. Now, the Royal Commission has called for the details of all Ms Gobbo's clients over those years. The files, the recordings, the diary notes. It is going to be a massive undertaking. Mike. This scandal has impacted hard on the legal world. Nick McCallum is at the Supreme Court. Nick, what is the fallout? Mike, universally, lawyers are horrified by the betrayal by Nicola Gobbo. They say lawyer-client privilege is a basic tenant of their profession. In fact, one went so far today as to say he was embarrassed and ashamed to be a lawyer. Now, prominent QC David Galbley says it will take years for the profession to recover from this. Certainly it will take a long time to look at each conviction and determine whether it should stand or not stand. And if the conviction doesn't stand, it may go back and we may have a retrial. I can understand the members of the public saying that they don't trust the system. This is a massive breach of trust. The Royal Commission into the scandal should start hearing from witnesses in about a month and only then will we start to understand the full scale of the damage and Nicola Gobbo will be called to testify, Mike.